we are starting registering and then we we start okay okay let's start so hello my name is flora Briccia. today we have for you a lesson about isometries it's very interesting to see that math and nature are connected. First, our student will explain some topics about isometries. Mm -hmm. Then we have prepared an activity. In fact, the focus of this lesson is on a particular activity. Are you ready? Okay, let's start with a short video for you. One moment. Mathematics is the queen of sciences. There is mathematics everywhere in nature. Show a place, a thing, matter, energy, force, etc. Wherever there are numbers, mathematics is there. And numbers are everywhere. Therefore, mathematics is everywhere. The planets go around the sun in precise orbits. The sun goes around the universe in a precise orbit. The electrons go around the nucleus of an atom in precise orbits. There is an order in all this. Wherever there is an order or rhythm, there is mathematics. Mathematics is in light and Mathematics is in sound. Mathematics is in order and also in disorder. The chaos theory is an example of mathematics in disorder. Mathematics is in the predictable and also in random. The shape of a flower, leaves, fruits, almost everything can be expressed as ideas in mathematics. They say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Yes, it is so. But a thing or music set to the golden standard or the golden ratio is universally appealing. There is the Fibonacci series in nature. The structure of a shell of an oyster is an expression of the Fibonacci series. Nature has made the insect called cicada to reproduce in 13 year cycle or a 17 year cycle. The numbers 13 and 17 are prime numbers. Because of this, cicada experiences lesser predator attacks. In short, we can say that mathematics is the language of nature. And verily yes, mathematics is the language of nature and the universe. Okay, now we go on with our students and in particular with Aurora, okay? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our math lesson. Today, in our class, we will explain you the concepts of isometries, translations, and symmetries. Let's start with isometries. In their name, iso means same, and matter means measure. They are transformation, movement, displacements, 
that keep the measurable characteristics unchanged, length of the site, width of the corners. For example, this is an isometry, where all points are in the same distance. A translation is an affine transformation that moves all points in a fixed distance in the same direction. Here, there is a translation. Generally speaking, symmetry means the presence of repetition in the geometric shape of an object. The object could be, for example, a two-dimensional figure, a paint, a polygon. For example, a butterfly's wings are symmetrical. A rotation is the transformation of a plan that moves all objects in a rigid way and that leaves at least one point fixed. The point that remain fixed is the transformation for more generally a subspace. When this set is a point or a straight line, is it called the center and the axis of rotation respectively? This is an example of rotation. Is that clear? And now Chiara will explain. Uh, we highly recommend you to pay attention to the explanation so that you will do great in our final quicks. Uh, and now Chiara will explain the symmetry. Okay, while we wait for the presentation by Chiara, um, I, I wanted just to know, um, is our isometries part of your programs? Just to know. Have you made isometries, for example, in Portugal or in Poland, in Turkey? I think so, yeah, we have that. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Turkey and Portugal? Um, I don't know. And, uh, in Portugal? I'm not sure about this. Sorry, Ricardo. Okay, okay. It's okay. Ricardo? Yeah. Portugal, yes. We, we, we work on that. Okay, okay. Good. Uh, UK is not here anyway, so we just go on with that. Hi, I'm Chiara, and today I talk about uh, symmetry. In math, an isometry is any transformation which preserves distance. Examples of isometry are translation, rotation, uh, which uh, we'll focus on uh, by my classmates uh, Benedetto and Gabriele, and symmetry that can be axial or central. Today, we will focus on rotation and symmetry. A symmetry is the capacity of a geometric shape to be moved on a Cartesian plane. According to the first, a point with the central symmetry. Uh, the, the second is uh, a straight line with axial symmetry and that a third is a plan with bilateral uh, mm, symmetry. Now I, explain, I will explain central symmetry. The central symmetry is a particular type of uh, eight, 180 degrees rotation with respect to the rotation center. The correspond points are alike on opposite rays and uh, at the same distance from the center, for they are symmetrical. So, rotation becomes a central symmetry, and is its center becomes the center of the symmetry. Now, um, my, my classmate Alessio uh, in, will introduce uh, uh, the axial symmetry and uh, the rotation. Hello, I'm Alessio and I'm going to introduce uh, the axial symmetry. Uh, so, the axial symmetry is a particular type of 180 degrees rotation 
also called overturning, around a straight line called axis of um, symmetry. In this image, we find a representation of Narcissus uh, with um, axial symmetry around a straight line. The um, axial symmetry of an axis called R is a transformation that to each P point of the plane not belonging to the axis associates a P first point such that the P P first segment is perpendicular uh, to the axis and the M midpoint of P P first belongs to the axis. In this slide, um, we find uh, the formula to find the midpoint. So, the ascissa x of m point is the sum of the ascissa p plus the ascissa x um, p first, all divided by 2. Below, we find the inverted formula to find the ascissa x of first, which is the, um, the difference between double of the ascissa x of m minus the ascissa x of p. Uh, if, is it if it is clear, then I can go on. Okay, let's go on. Um, rotation is another uh, form of isometry. The rotation is turning an object around a point, which is called point of rotation. Whenever a rotation occurs, the figure must always be the same size and same shape. It is only turned. If a figure is rotated all the way around back to where it started, then it is called a full rotation and is 3 uh, 6 degrees. When a figure is rotated exactly 180 degrees, it is said to have point symmetry because each point has a matching point and it is the same distance but in the opposite direction. So now I leave the word to um, my classmates Gabriele and Benedetto. Everything clear so far? Could you easily see the presentations? Yes, perfect, thank you. Good. Yes, perfectly. Sorry. Thank you very much. The translation is anisometry, therefore it is a geometric transformation that doesn't change distances, whereas it moves all the points by a fixed distance in the same direction. Each translation is defined by a vector characterized by module and direction. The module or intensity represents the vector's length. In a translation, it points out how we have to move the point. The direction is indicated by the line where the vector lies, while the vector is represented by the orientation. The translation of any geometric figure is obtained by the application of a given vector b at each point of the figure. In a Cartesian plane, a vector is defined by its components, indicated by dx and dy. V is dx plus dy. To obtain the new coordinates of a point, you need to use the following formula. X first is X plus VX, and Y first is Y plus VY, where X and Y are the coordinates of the starting point. Is clear? So instead, uh, X first and uh, Y first are the coordinates of the translating point. For example,